Today, we're building a better bowl of instant ramen. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my favorite hacks for upgrading a basic bowl of instant ramen. I love instant ramen. It's something that I always had in my house growing up. Um, even little baby Carrie could go to the pantry and make a pack of this. And honestly, I think it's pretty tasty without adding anything to it. Um, I mean, they're fried noodles and that instant pack is so seasoned. But over the years, I've come up with ways to make instant ramen a little tastier, feel a little bit more luxe, and I'm gonna share those tips with you today. So the first tip I have for you is experiment with different versions of instant ramen. There are a ton of options lining the shelf these days. Now, when I was growing up, this was about all you could find in the Mega Mart was this Man Marachen instant ramen, and the blue bag was always my favorite. Um, but these days you can find, even in the regular grocery store, slightly fancier versions of instant ramen. And you know what, they're a little bit more expensive. I think you can get these for 25 cents a pack if you buy in bulk. And so you might be paying maybe $1.50, a couple dollars per pack. But what you get in a little bit of an upgrade is a better textured noodle and also some extra seasoning packets. A lot of the times they'll put in like a little packet of dehydrated vegetables or a little packet of like oil to make the broth feel a little bit more luxe. So it's totally worth it and still very inexpensive. The other hack I have for you is go explore the shelves of your local Asian grocery store. You're gonna find I mean, so many options. I've been going to H Mart probably once a month through this whole pandemic. And I mean, I haven't even gotten through all of the versions, but we did find this version of instant ramen that both Sean and I love, Jin Ramen. And this is the mild one. I think it's a Korean version. So the spicy one's a little spicy for us, but this one we love. So today we're going to make this to build a better bowl of ramen. Um, and because I'm making lunch for both of us, I'm gonna use two packets. Okay, so my next hack is use some homemade stock if you got it. Now, my first video ever was on Instant Pot stock, and we have been making Instant Pot stock regularly over the past, I don't know, six months. It's so awesome to have in the fridge for making soups or sauces, and I love using it for ramen. Now, if that's a step too far for you, get a nice carton of bone broth or stock from your grocery store shelves, or even some grocery stores have pretty much homemade stock in the prepared food section. And it goes a good way to upgrading the mouthfeel of the broth in your instant noodles. Also, I find that if I have a really good stock, I only really have to use half of the seasoning packet, which is really good because those seasoning packets are just so filled with sodium that being able to cut down a little bit on them um, is really helpful just to make it, not that this is healthy stuff, but to make it a little bit less um, sodium heavy. Um, so that is my first tip, um, instant pot stock. So we're going to pour that into our pot here. And we're gonna get that heated up, up to a boil. And let's take a look at our upgraded pack of ramen. All right, so like I said, in these upgraded packs, you get this little dehydrated vegetable mix, which gives a little added flavor and texture to your soup and the regular powder. Now for this version of soup, they say to add this seasoning pack, the, the vegetable pack in with the boiling water. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna open this pack and then we're gonna get to hack number three. Hack number three is mix-ins. Add some stuff to the instant ramen. And there's a whole host of things you can add. Um, and what I have here today are a few things. First of all, we had hot pot last week, so we had some leftover thinly cut meat. So I'm gonna put that in. 
I also love these little frozen fish balls. And this is gonna be a little bit of a theme of this video. Go check out your Asian market because you're gonna find some great pantry ingredients. These little fish balls are frozen. They last forever in your freezer. And I just love them in any kind of soup, asian -y soup, noodle soup, and I love putting them in my ramen. Um, and they taste a little bit like the fake crab with a K, um, but I, I just, I like anything seafoody and I love these. And then we just have some little frozen wontons. Again, at H Mart, we've been stocking up on dumplings and I found these wontons, so we're gonna stick them in. But this isn't the only thing you can add in. If you have frozen meatballs, throw them in that pot. Um, if you have leftover rotisserie chicken or leftover chicken, that's a great add-in. Another thing we love to do in the summer is that when we're smoking things on our big green egg, we like to save the extra smoked meat. So smoked ribs or pulled pork. And we just freeze extras into little packages and then we can pull those to toss them in with the ramen. And the great thing about that is you can fro throw that stuff frozen into your pot. And as your you know, soup is heating up, it's going to flavor that broth even more. Now, for what I have today, the meat that I have, which is pork belly and steak, it's only gonna take a second. So I'm gonna put this in at the very end um, of the cooking, right about maybe two minutes until our noodles are done. Um, but I am gonna throw the fish balls in here because those will help season. Um, and the wontons are going to go in with the noodles. Um, but yeah, find some mix-ins, experiment with things that you like, um, that you have left over, and just toss them in and add them to your soup. The next tip I wanna talk about is supplementing your seasoning pack. So we have this beautiful seasoning pack, like we talked about, it's a little high in sodium, so maybe we only wanna use you know, half of this. We have our stock that might add some flavor, um, but there's a lot of other things you can add to supplement that seasoning. So things like miso paste, you could scoop um, a spoonful of this into the bottom of your bowl and kind of whisk that in um, as you're serving the broth into the bowl. The same thing with this gochujang sauce, which is Korean chili paste, which is super tasty. You can add um, sesame paste. This is actually tahini. I don't have sort of Asian sesame paste, but this would do the same thing. This would add a little sesame flavor, plus a little body and thickness to your broth. And if you don't have that, you can use a little peanut butter and get a very similar effect. The other thing you might wanna do is find some instant dashi powder. Again, go to your local Asian Mart, have some fun, look at some of the condiments we have. I got this in a Japanese, um, box of different products from Japan. And some of these things like the miso and the gojujang and this um, dashi powder, just you're gonna wanna be careful. Um, and you might wanna hold back more of your seasoning pack until you taste what your broth tastes like because they are also high in sodium. Um, but you know, just choose what you like. And then there are some season seasoning supplements that I would add sort of as I'm serving. Um, so things like, sriracha, I love sambal, and um, we have been making our own chili oil for dumplings. Um, so this is really delicious stirred in. So obviously you're not gonna add all of these to your ramen, but experiment with the flavors that you like. Um, so today I'm actually gonna stir a little bit of miso in, and I'm gonna stir a little bit of sesame in, um, and we're gonna see how that comes out. I am waiting for my broth to come up to a boil. And once we do that, we're going to finish our ramen and then we're gonna talk about our, well, our last hack. I do have a bonus hack for you. So see you back in just a couple of minutes when this comes up to a boil. Oh, hey, I forgot. I also forgot that I do like to use scallions and I like to use scallions um, both at the end and during cooking. And so like I cut the white, the more heartier parts off, and I like to put those in with the broth to help season the broth a little bit. So let's do that. All right, now I will see you back in a couple of minutes. Okay, so my ramen stock has come up to a boil. And so we're gonna add a couple of these mix-ins and the rest of our 
ingredients. So I'm gonna plop in, plop. So I'm gonna put in these wontons and I'm going to add the noodles. I'm gonna let these cook for a couple of minutes. Well, actually probably just a minute. Um, and then I'm going to add this meat in because it's gonna cook very fast. It's super thinly sliced. And I'm also going to put just one packet of seasoning flavor because we have a lot of flavor in here. I'm gonna add some miso to one of our bowls so we don't wanna go overwhelming. We can just keep this second pack and if we need a little bit more, we can add it. And I made a mess. All right. So we're just gonna let these cook until the noodles are almost done and then I'm going to add the sliced meat in. All right, so it's been maybe 30 seconds. These noodles are instant after all. Um, and I'm just gonna drop in some of our hot pot meat. You know, if you didn't have shaved um, pork belly, you could just use thin cut bacon and it would act in the same way. It's so thin and it will cook really fast. And honestly, that would add a nice smoky flavor to your broth as well. Um, so, you know, that's an option. And if you had meatballs in your freezer, I would put those in at the same time as I put those fish balls in. Those also will season your um, broth up really nicely as the broth is coming up to cook. I have just a couple more pieces in here. And then I think our ramen's pretty much going to be done. But we do have a couple of more hacks. I'm gonna turn the heat off here um, and just let the noodles just finish cooking in the hot broth as well as the meat. We don't wanna overcook those things. So this is a hack which is buy some nice ramen bowls. Um, this really just makes you feel like you're eating something a little bit more special. I like using chopsticks as well. I got these at H Mart and they were very inexpensive and they're just beautiful and you know they hold a lot of ramen, which is nice. Um, and then we're going to season. So I'm going to do one bowl with a little bit of miso paste in it. And I'm going to do one bowl with a little bit of this tahini sesame paste. And just to make those, make sure those are incorporated well, I am going to, just to make sure those things are incorporated well, I am going to just pour a little bit of broth in and whisk them up because you don't want like clumps of this stuff in the bottom of the bowl. You want to make sure they're incorporated with the rest of your ramen. All right, that's all nicely whisked up and we can serve the rest of our ramen into our bowls, but we still have one more hack, one more tip. So once we fill these bowls up, We'll get to that. We got a little bit of a lady in the tramp thing going here. So I'm just gonna move these noodles to their respective bowls. So the last hack I have to make a better bowl of instant ramen is to add some garnishes. And again, this can be lots of different things. Um, so we could have some furikake, which is sort of um, sesame and um, seaweed kind of crumbled. Um, I really like these sheets of nori, which you usually get when you go out for ramen at a restaurant. So we're going to take a sheet of nori and we are going to just tear this into about four squares. So each bowl will get two squares. I'm going to put this in last because it kind of um, gets soggy, um, but I also really like just some herbs. So um, some the, the green parts of the scallion. I love cilantro. So we're gonna add some cilantro into this. 
and then an egg. Obviously, no. When I was a kid, my ramen was you just do the basic pack, and then at the very end, you stir in a scrambled egg, and you have these like threads of egg. Now I really like a sort of jammy medium boiled egg, which was what I hope I have here. I just cooked this egg in the Instant Pot um, for five minutes and then immediately sort of undid the pressure and plunged it into cold water and peeled it. And usually that gets me what I want, so we'll see. Oh yeah, this perfect jammy egg. So we're just going to pop that on top and add this. Oh man, that is like so perfect. Add that here. And now you have a bowl of ramen that looks like you got it at a ramen shop. And you know, with the upgrade, maybe you spent a dollar fifty on the ramen and then you know, honestly, again, maybe the biggest hack here is go to your local Asian store and find some pantry ingredients that you can keep on hand. They will last forever in the refrigerator, your shelves or the freezer, and you will always have a upgraded bowl of ramen at your fingertips. Now I'm gonna give this a taste because remember we didn't put all of the seasoning packs. So I wanna make sure that we don't need to add more seasoning. Nope, this is perfect. This is the miso one, so you get that nice, miso-y sort of umami flavor. Um, let's taste this one a little bit. This is the sesame, and actually this is the first time I've ever tried the sesame hack. Oh, I love that. I love sesame flavor anyhow. And it does give the broth a nice, rich feeling. We've got our nori sheets, which we can pop on here. And now we're set for lunch. So, and I can hear the dog jingling and he thinks it's lunchtime too. So I've got to get a picture of these, but you know, once I eat, I'll probably add some hot oil or a little sambal to spice it up. And there you have it. Five or six hacks, I guess the bowl is a hack. Six hacks to make a better bowl of instant ramen. Um, you're never gonna go back after you start playing with how to upgrade your ramen. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and click subscribe and that little bell button to be alerted when I launch a new video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Now, go have some fun in the kitchen. Go to your local Asian grocery market and buy some really delicious things to make your instant ramen amazing.